G'day. Today I thought I'd uh, show you the process of uh, making up some lathe dogs. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a lathe dog is, uh, typically this is one. And the way they work is, as has been done here, you have a piece of material, it's got a centre in it, that sits on a live centre in the uh, headstock of the lathe. There's another centre on the end there to fit in the tailstock, and then that's driven around by a, um, a fitting on the lathe chuck. Uh, it's, a, it's a very old method of doing things. It's not used as much these days because there's uh, three jaw, four jaw chucks are a lot more prevalent, but at the same time it's a great way of making sure that the axis of your the material you're turning is spot on the axis of the lathe because you can put that in, take that out a number of times and you're still going to return to the same spot. Now. I've got a job coming up where I want to uh, turn something and then turn it over and turn the other end. So what I'm going to do is put a mandrel through there and because I've got it on centres I know that when I turn it over it's going to be concentric with what was done on the other half. So here's a simulated lathe headstock with, with uh, drive plate and centre installed. There's my material, I've got my drive dog on there. I line the centers up that's located there that way when this rotates that's going to drive that and that'll turn the work I can take that out I can put that back and provided I locate on the center it's still going to be in the same axis so that's the advantage of a, um, a dog now there are a couple of types around the place if you've got a, a lathe with a, a, a drive plate which has got a pin on it you can use a, a, a flat one like that same thing applies, it clamps onto the, the work, but you've got a pin, so it, it drives against the pin. Some people, to um, stop vibration, will wire that, a bit of fencing wire, that sort of thing, to the pin, and that's quite acceptable. With this style, you can't do that, and so what I do is uh, use a piece of, of plastic or rubber hose or something like that, and I'll locate that in there and use that as a, as a as a as a cushioning thing to try and stop that because otherwise it, it gets a little bit annoying you get a clack 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 not so bad when you're cutting a thread or something like that but if you're doing an interrupted cut you will notice it these ones um, are just something a little bit uh, uh, more uh, complicated a bit more involved and uh, I made them up to, to do a bit of hot bending I was inspired by um, Dave over at uh, Ingalls Coachworks of all places to, to try a little bit of hot bending and, and they've, they've worked out rather well. I've done three different sizes because bar stock comes in different sizes and it's more convenient rather than trying to get a, a small piece of bar stock in there and having a very long bolt, uh, it's, it's a bit more convenient to have several sizes to use. To get the teardrop shape I want I've marked out the area that's going to be flat and on this end as well and then this middle part I'm going to be heating. I also need to be careful not to stop when I'm heating this to red heat between these two uh, lines and stop right there because the strength of the metal varies remarkably with heat and so if I stop there I'm going to get a stiff part here and I need to get that a uniform bend through there. This is the setup I've used a bit of bar of the, the right internal diameter, a backstop, that could be a peg, if I was doing this repetitively I'd probably make up a block and put a put a peg into it, uh, V-block to help just hold the um, the bar and the vise, and then you put the bar in and you bend, and I've, I'm finding that you've got to do this on a, uh, a gradual basis, you can't do the whole lot in one hit, you need to heat a bit up, bend that bit, come back, bend again, and so on. An interesting thing to notice, well for those of us who are a bit on the geeky side, is that if you look at the straight edge there, there's a gap under the middle, right? And that's because the sides of the material have bent up. Whenever you're bending material, you need to remember that the stuff in the middle will behave in a relatively predictable way because it's constrained by the material. Near the edges, it's going to flare and buckle and do all sorts of things. So just something to remember when you're, when you're bending metal.
had to get my ASO out here to just uh, do a little panel beating work on, on this one. It's still hot, so I'm not going to touch it. Uh, but as you can see from these other two, uh, I've got the, the, the teardrop shape I'm after. The next thing we're going to do is put a spot of weld in the corners there and on this one. Uh, and that'll just help stabilise the shape a little bit. And then I'm going to put them in the mill, take a, take a bit off the sides, um, clean them up a bit, put a, put a peg on there and that should... Uh, oh, and put a, put a screw through the, the top there to hold the stock in and that should just about do me, I think. This is probably the best method I've found for holding. Um, T-bolt through the middle of the, uh, the dog. Um, shallow, uh, uh, well, shallow, not very deep cuts. Just do a half, turn it round, do the other half. You end up with a result like that, which isn't too bad, uh, which is uh, ready for the next bit. The small one is a little bit more problematic because it's a matter of, of having something to hold. Uh, so you might have to revert to a, a vise for that, but then again, that should be all right because it's, it's, it's a lot stiffer. If you tried clamping that in the vise, you'd get spring, you might get it popping out. Whereas the smaller one, uh, less likely. But be careful. just so I know where it is. I'm, I've decided at this stage I should probably mark out the position of the, um, the clamping bolt. And I'm doing that simply by putting the part in there, measuring off what the angle is, which in this case is 66 degrees, uh, and then going to half of that, which should be uh, 3 degrees in there, 33. Right. They were all meant, to, well on paper they were all meant to be um, 60 degree angle, so it's not surprising. And if you wanted to you could flip your, your measurometer over and uh, check the other side and yes that is in the centre. So I know that when I come to drill and tap that, and I may have to mark this out again, but when I come to drill and tap that, as provided that bolt is, is in line with that thing, it's going to come straight down into the middle of E which is basically what you want. That's, that's how it's going to, uh, going to clamp the, uh, the round stock. One of the things that I've been thinking about is the thickness of this material. Now that's, that's five millimeter less, you know, a bit of clean up and all that sort of thing, which really isn't big enough for a, um, a decent thread. So what I'm going to do is, is make up a, a block and just weld that onto the back there. And that'll have actually two um, purposes. One is it'll be, have the, the, the tapped hole for the uh, clamping screw. But the other one is it'll, it'll sort of just stiffen that back section up, uh, which isn't a bad thing. You want a little bit of spring, but uh, not too much. And you can see that um, here it's relatively thin, here it's, it's, it's a bit thicker, and that's, that's part of the bending process. What I've done is I've got a, a, a block marked here with the center line. I'm going to position my center lines uh, together and then I'm just going to scribe there and that will give me uh, an arc there which I can then oh, hog out with probably with an angle grinder or something like that. I'll secure that in a vise and just, just hog that out. Um, use that as a, as a bit of a template to um, when, I'm, when I'm getting close. But um, once I have a, a block which is about right, I can then just cut that off to length, um, weld that on and I've got that, that thickness there. Um, uh, then it's easy, it's just a matter of putting a tapped hole in there and putting a, a peg on this end.
here are the three dogs uh, half I made I need to uh, dress the worlds up a little bit here and, and skim the top off because most of these lumps of material are just saw cut um, they're a little bit hot at the moment these two aren't too bad but this one is uh, a bit on the on the burny side uh, one thing I will try too is is soaking them in some vinegar because um, on the the Blondie Hacks uh, YouTube channel a couple of people suggested that as a good way of removing a scale and there's just a little bit of scale on the inside there. So here are the parts after 12 hours in a vinegar bath and when I first saw them I thought oh well, they're okay you know they look a bit grotty but uh, when I polish them up on a wire wheel uh, they've come out quite uh, quite good so the, the vinegar method is a, is a, a worthwhile method I think. I'll try that again. The next step here is to, to basically square up these, tap the holes. Here are the finished articles so bit of flat bar bent up into a teardrop shape, reinforcing block across the back with a with a tapped hole and the axis of the hole should line up with the V which it does for a given under given value of lining up and then welded on here is a, a pin that will engage in the uh, the drive plate on the on the lathe uh, and they should be quite adequate for pretty much any size I've got going from say 10 millimeters up to probably uh, 50 millimeters or something like that thanks for watching and uh, i hope it was an enjoyable for you also thanks to uh, dave over at Ingalls coach for the, the the blacksmithing inspiration and uh thanks also to others who've inspired me